In South Korea, another electric Mercedes caught on fire underground and filled the entire building with smoke. In Finland, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, it caught fire, destroying dozens of cars in a parking garage. Two days later, another electric vehicle caught fire in a different Finnish garage. And this time, it barely spread. So let's take a look at these three recent parking garage fires. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. Early in the morning on October 5th, 2025, a fire broke out in the underground parking garage of an apartment complex in Suwon, just south of Seoul, South Korea. The vehicle involved was another Mercedes. It was an electric car and it was plugged in and charging on the first basement level. At 8.04 a.m., the fire alarm sounded. Within minutes, thick smoke began pushing through the underground levels and into stairwells. Crews arrived with 19 fire trucks and nearly 60 firefighters. By 8.43, they had the fire contained, but suppression wasn't easy. Underground garages are a nightmare to ventilate, especially when you're dealing with battery smoke. The fire spread to two nearby vehicles, damaging concrete beams, and melting a lot of the infrastructure that was in the ceiling itself. This was a 15-story building that housed right around 1,800 families. Pretty incredible. One employee on site was treated for smoke inhalation, and dozens of residents were evacuated. Even after the fire was knocked down, the battery pack was still a concern. Firefighters removed the EV from the garage and placed it in a water tank outside, and they continued cooling it for hours to prevent reignition. According to local sources, sprinkler systems and automatic fire alarms were not required under current South Korea building codes for that class of residential garage. That's expected to change. South Korea is in the middle of tightening its fire codes after a string of underground parking garage fires involving electric vehicles. Under new national standards, all newly constructed underground parking garages will be required to have sprinkler systems and automatic fire detection, with the goal of providing faster suppression and smoke control in confined spaces. Existing garages aren't yet fully covered by the new rules, but several municipalities are already moving ahead with some local ordinances that go further. Some proposals even limit EVs from having fully charged batteries from entering underground garages until sprinkler systems are installed, and some parking garages are banning electric vehicles altogether. These changes were driven by recent high-profile incidents, one of which was back in 2024 in Incheon, a Mercedes EQE fire which showed just how quickly EV and hybrid fires can overwhelm unsprinkled structures. If you want to learn more about that incident, I do have a link in the description below. I covered that last year. But public concern has grown so much that the government now wants automakers to disclose which battery suppliers and which chemistry each electric vehicle uses to help trace potential defects. But if you step back from the headlines, you start to see a pattern. The severity of these incidents often has to do more with the building's fire protection system than the car itself. With that said, the location of the car plays a big role. Some of these parking garages can even have multiple levels below ground. An electric vehicle fire that's extremely deep underground, it causes major issues for firefighters. Now, let's rewind back a bit to October 1st, 2025, in Tampere, Finland. A plug-in hybrid electric vehicle was charging inside a downtown parking facility below an office complex when it caught fire. Roughly 90 vehicles were parked inside at the time. This was an extremely hot fire, and firefighters described it as one of the most intense garage fires they've ever fought. Within a short time, five cars were completely destroyed, and as many as 30 to 50 were declared a total loss. The garage had no sprinkler system, but the building's compartmentalization and smoke control systems worked exactly as designed. Smoke curtains dropped between sections. It kept the flames from spreading to other levels. The smoke extraction fans also performed extremely well. It cleared visibility and lowered temperatures enough for fire crews to make an interior push. Despite the lack of active suppression, those passive fire protection features, they likely prevented a total loss of the structure. Crews used water streams to knock down the fire, and they stayed overnight monitoring hot spots and looking for battery ignition. Just two days later, another electric vehicle caught fire while charging in a town just north of Helsinki. This time, the car was parked below grade, and the fire was located under a grocery store. Thankfully, the fire occurred late at night, and the parking garage was nearly empty. That alone changed everything and made for a much better outcome. 
but the garage also had higher ceilings, which helped dissipate the radiant heat and prevented the flames from jumping nearby cars. Firefighters quickly contained the fire to the vehicle of origin. However, smoke managed to get up into the grocery store and it forced it to close temporarily. Again, there were no sprinklers reported here either, and thankfully there were also no injuries. All three of these fires started while the vehicles were charging. All three required extended firefighting operations, but the outcomes were drastically different. Differences that were more based on luck and timing versus solid codes and standards. There's a lot of debate online about whether electric vehicles pose a greater fire risk than traditional vehicles, but the truth is, all modern vehicles are built with plastics and composites that burn extremely well. The real issue isn't just what's burning, it's how we're protecting those places and where those fires happen. We need to rethink fire protection in parking garages, and not just for new construction. Every garage, even the older ones that might need expensive retrofits, should have suppression systems in place. We also have to consider where chargers are installed and where electric vehicles are allowed to park. Because once an EV fire starts, the goal is to get the vehicle outside, and that's nearly impossible when it's buried deep in a basement level. So when we look at electric vehicle fires in parking garages, the question shouldn't be just about what caught on fire. It should be where it caught on fire. Because time and again, the deciding factor isn't the battery, it's the building, it's the protection systems that are installed.